What's up guys, Max here and welcome back to my dungeon. Today I have for you another interesting fight. The EVGA RTX 3090 FTW3 Ultra Gaming Anyway, this is too long for the name but the best one, and the AMD RX 6800 XT from Powercolor, so reference design. Those two are the actual flagship for Nvidia and AMD. And I'm going to show you the benchmark of World of Warcraft in Bastion, so the Shadowlands beta, with and without the Ray Trace Shadow, and the Chu in Ride from BFA, so the Queen Ashzara. And uh, well, I have only the Chu in detail for the Ride, so you will see a comparison between other graphics card for the Shadowlands beta and uh, only those two for the rides. And I suggest you to watch the video in full since there is a lot of details inside with uh, frame time, uh, deep analysis that you don't want to miss. But now let's get straight to the point and let me show you the numbers. Before we start I have to say that the first card that came in was the Radeon and uh, I started testing with World of Warcraft and uh, I wasn't completely happy about that, uh, I'll explain you that later. And well, I started tweaking and tuning and then the RTX 3090 came in and I started to compare the two. And I found something really interesting, but let the numbers speak for themselves. All right, so uh, as you can see, I have tested a lot of uh, settings for the Radeon 6800 XT and uh, in particular, the smart access memory. This is a brand new feature that uh, optimizes the bandwidth of the PCI Express to remove the bottlenecks and increase performance. To activate it is very simple, it's just a BIOS setting. But now let's get back to our chart. This is clearly uh, a scenario that is uh, CPU limited, since uh, as you can see the powerful GPU like uh, 2080 Ti, 3090, they are bottlenecking at 156. That is more or less uh, what we saw in the past video when I test all the new CPUs. That we saw that uh, the Ryzen 5800X is the best CPU to run this game. Plus, with this feature, we can have uh, another 6 or 7 or 8 uh, FPS more than uh, with the older architecture. I tested also the Auto OC mode that is called, I think, uh, like Rage Mode or something like that. And uh, I saw that is not working correctly since I've lost uh, some FPS uh, from the default settings. Uh, so I manually overclocked uh, the card with uh, 2500 MHz on the core, 2150 on the memory and plus 15% uh, of power limit. And uh, well, again, in this test, uh, the gain was basically nothing, even we, we lost uh, uh, 3 FPS in the 1% loss. Moving to the 4K resolution is where the things get interesting, since now we are not anymore CPU bottlenecked and we can see the numbers of all the power that those graphics cards have. And uh, yes, the 3090 is at the first place with 144 FPS on average and 103 FPS uh, 1%. And well, this was quite expected since uh, it's a much, much expensive card and well, it's, it's a bigger card. But what I saw and then, as I told you before, uh, when I tested the 6800 XT, uh, I didn't uh, enabled uh, smart access memory, so I saw that the 6800 XT was uh, more or less a tie with the 2080 Ti and I was a bit disappointed, but then I started tweaking, overclocking, activate the settings and as you can see, if we can tune this card by only using the smart access memory and the auto OC feature, the difference against the 3090 is not that much since uh, even if we tune only with the smart access memory and the auto C features or even if we leave the card at default we're talking about 131 versus 144 that is not much and if you have a variable refresh rate display probably you don't even notice another thing to point out is uh, take a look at the 5700 xt anniversary so it's an over factory overclocked uh, version and we are talking about uh, like double the FPS and the price difference is not that much. And now 
we have the race traced uh, shadow benchmark so the same benchmark as before but with the ray traced shadow enabled on high settings and this is where i got really surprised since uh, at least in world of warcraft amd is beating nvidia at their own game we have uh, a ray traced uh, result that is better than nvidia and not by a small amount we are talking about 40 fps and even in 4k we have uh, amd in the top position Take in consideration that uh, without a smart access memory, the 6800 XT is the last in line. And this is something that is really important. So for the ray tracing performance, a smart access memory is something that is really helping. Um, probably Nvidia is going to do it the same, we don't know. But so far, AMD in World of Warcraft is leading the ray tracing game. And now the things get again very interesting. So. It seems that the 6800 XT and the 3090, they are a tie, but uh, no, that uh, result is because we are heavily CPU limited. So 1440p, those two graphics cards are too powerful for this resolution that we are limited by the CPU. And it's pretty weird since uh, take a look at the RTX 2080 or the 5700 XT. Uh, the results are very different, so those cards are really, really powerful. Rocking 171 FPS uh, in a ride is a big deal. Take a look at the 1% lows. 117 FPS with 104.1% uh, lows. Needless to say, the experience gaming was super smooth. And if you have a 1440p display, even if you have a 165 Hz or 144 Hz, and you have a GPU that is the 5700 XT or similar, you might want to get an upgrade. But to have those numbers, you have to upgrade also the CPU to the newest generation Ryzen or to a 10th generation Intel. And now the ride in 4K. Again, quality 10, everything maxed out. And this is probably the most impressive uh, chart that I have for you today, since uh, we are talking about roughly the same performance but again the price of the 3090 is like three times more the one of the 6800 XT but let's dig deeper this is the software that I use to record the benchmark CapFrame X is a very nice uh, software that allows me to see the frame time and this graph is very important because if you see spikes spikes mean stuttering so if there's a spike is where the game uh, suddenly uh, stop for a fraction of a second and you lose the smoothness of the game and sometimes if it's a lot you may struggle to play now another important indicator is that uh, at least at this resolution at 4k we had the gpu average utilization at 98 percent so using this tool i'm sure that i was not uh, even close to being cpu bottlenecked so the result is a fair fight now what you just saw was the chart uh, for the 3090 if we look at the 16800 xt we see basically the same thing so no issue at all so zero percent stuttering the frame times is even a bit more cleaner and again our gpu is uh, working with an average of 98 percent so not even close of being cpu bottlenecked now, if we put the data on the same chart, uh, you can see that uh, the result is quite similar. So no big spikes, uh, maybe the MD1 is a bit more cleaner, but nothing that you can perceive at naked eye. Here we can see the card uh, side by side. It's very impressive that uh, the FPS on average is that high that we can really max out a 4K 144 Hz display without any issue. The 3090 seems a bit uh, cooler, but I will review that uh, in a separate video. All right, guys, what can I say? I'm really impressed by the Radeon, uh, not only by the performance that are remarkable, but mostly for the price, since uh, this is like one third of this one. And honestly, for the performance and the price, this is really stunning. Uh, okay, we have the CUDA cores here, there's a lot of uh, uh, application that benefit from the extra that gives that card and also if you want to use RTX sound, uh, but personally I don't like it, but 
this is personal preference and other stuff that the Nvidia have more than AMD but if you are looking for raw power this is absolutely the best buy and what can I say uh, we are not uh, seeing all the line yet since uh, now in uh, two or three weeks uh, there's the 6900 XT that is coming out so we are not have seen the best one yet and I'm really excited to if I can grab one and test it so well this is very nice isn't it as always uh, let me know in the comment section what you think about that, if you want to engage a discussion, join my Discord server, let's talk about it, if you want to see some other tests, uh, that by the way, I'm going to review the two separately in deep with overclocking, additional settings, tweaks uh, and everything, so you can expect more from me for those two, and well, uh, stay tuned for more, subscribe, hit the best button, usual stuff like always, and see you in the next one.